Hi, this is Suzanne in Ohio. Hey, I'm back this afternoon with a little tutorial on um, how to make these fabric roses. I showed them in another video when I was showcasing the journals. But in case you didn't see that one, let me get, get you up to speed here. Um, I sat down one day to make these fabric roses in hopes of making some rose themed journals and I did complete three of them and I showed those on another video. So what I did was choose one of these rose clusters and I attached it to the fabric wrap on each one of the rose journals. So I wanted to show you what my process is to make these little lace and uh, rose clusters which can be used for anything but let me first show you what I did with them um, I made my goal was to also use them to make some um, paper I wanted to scan them and include some of the images of the roses in the journal so you can see here I have quite a collection I even have a strip here with nothing but rose buds on it and that turned out really nice just using more scraps and then here's a couple here's so they just go on and on and on very very cute and fun to make and easy so I want to get you started if you're interested in slow stitching or fabric crafts of any kind uh, you might be interested in this I'll just give you my take on how I put them together but here's the papers that I was able to make and it was very easy I just um, laid them all down on the scanner surface and put a piece of coffee dyed paper in the background and scanned them off and so I ended up with um, these two full sheets they're both different even though at first glance you think they're the same but there's different roses on each one and then I did some like this going down the middle so when I folded the page I would have some rows on both sides I put them along the edge I added music paper I added more lace I did all kind of fun things with them I think I have 25 different configurations of these making my own paper I'm going to have a lot of fun with those uh, this year, this summer, spring, even into fall, like the last rose of summer. So um, it, just to tell you about the images, I printed off several of these on like four to a page or two to a page, even smaller than that if you'd want. That way you have smaller images for journaling cards or pockets or tags or uh, signature covers or anything you want to use them for. So that was my goal and I feel like I succeeded. Um, ideas evolve as you work and hey, if it turns out usable and good, I'm happy. So there you have the papers made out of the rose clusters. So I want to show how I made these clusters. So this video is really for a slow stitcher or somebody that really just loves handwork. I love handwork. Besides that, it gives me something to do while I'm sitting on the couch making or watching uh, YouTube videos. So what we're going to do is start out with showing you what I get ready to work with. First of all, I have messy bins full of scraps. I mean of course I have many bins full of many scraps and in my mind I know exactly what I'm going to use them for but um, anything will work scraps of lace scraps of uh, fabric scraps of anything so here's this one bin full of mostly white scraps but I also have a bag full of fabric scraps and snippets from handkerchiefs and things like that and I even stuck a piece of this um, mesh I don't even know what this stuff's called but it's definitely I mean you can't even hardly tear it um, it's it's a fiber melted together and this is gold and I thought oh for certain roses that would be beautiful just to put a snippet of it in there so maybe we'll do that today include a snippet of that that way you can see how that works 
I also wanted to show you this little find, uh, this pink stuff laying here, if it even shows up on your camera, it's such a light color pink. I found this little dress at the thrift store on 50 cent day. Well, every day's 50 cent day for certain items, but I always check the color of the labels on their garments and see what, and this was 50 cents that day. It is covered with applique lace and this beautiful um, netting with, with flowers in it. So I thought, oh, I can use that for 50 cents. I can use that for the rest of my life probably. And I have another basket here. Um, can't show you at all, but it is just full of snippets, thread, straight pins, anything I might need. And that way I've got a little bit of everything on my lap when I sit down on the couch and I make it work. Um, that way I don't jump up and down for every single thing. All right, here's how I start. Now we'll get to how to make the roses, but I want to show you how the base goes together. So what I have here is a, t a small piece of Pellon, very thin, and I love Pellon for several reasons. It doesn't skew very far on the diagonal, and that keeps my item straight and flat usually and it's very easy for my needle to go through. So how I start these is with a piece of Pellon, but if you just want a piece of cotton or anything, you can. And if for some reason you need your uh, item that you're making stiffer, use a th stiffer piece of Pellon. Some of it's so rigid, it's almost like cardboard. But this is medium weight, and I just happen to have tons of scraps of it, and I'm using them up. Now, the first thing I like to start with is something that's a little bit dense, because if I don't happen to cover all the pellon, I don't want it to show through. So I just have a piece, a scrap of white fabric here, and this fabric is white on white, and that'll probably never end up showing, but if it does, it's good. If it's good, what's going to show through? And the next thing I like to do is start with a larger piece of curtain lace, usually. And so I cut this little piece, and it had a raggy edge on it, and I just left it. And I wanted to hang out the top edge. If it hung over the side edges, that would be okay. Now, that's just my base. So I just want to lay some scraps down, and I'm going to reach in here into my... Um, little box and because all of these scraps are fairly fairly small and you can see I've, I've got everything in here but I'll just take a piece and if I want to tear it I do and there you go and I love those raggy um, little edges and I'm going to leave them on there for now and then if I want to take them off in a little while I can if they're just too much so I'm just going to lay some pieces down here. Here's a piece of regular lace. And I don't want any straight edges showing on the outside, so I'll put that straight edge on the inside. Here's just a little scrap of a gauzy something that was off of the edge. And I'll stick it under there. And this one has a little blush color to it. That'll be fine. I'll put it there. And then let's see, what's this? That was a very antique lace and it was torn. So I'll put this on here also, but I'll make sure the straight edge is on the inside and a little bit covered up. Let's see how we like that. Well, I don't want to cover that, so I'll go over top of that. That's prettier. And we'll just get a nice foundation. Now, because I want this one to have a pink tone to it, let's start adding some pink lace. So that little pink dress I found at the thrift store, I took the sleeve off of it and here it is. And what I'm going to do is just tear it. I like torn edges. I don't want it to look too neat. So I'm just going to tear it down. And I know I'm off frame, but I can't get any leverage under the screen. And so let's just whack that off. Okay, so there's a little piece. And here's my little shaggy piece caught on my arm. Lay that down. 
and then I will probably layer this since it's so fine. I'll just layer it down and let's see what happens. I wondered if the pink would even show up and I'm going to have to put that on last. This is unrehearsed. This is just how it goes right here. Here's the real thing. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's great. Okay, so I have enough concentration of pink. It just fades out to nothingness. Now, what I could do is use a piece of the lining in that little dress because it has more pink coloring to it. Let me see if I can get to a piece of it real easy. I bet I can. I'm just going to snip over here and tear and get something under there to use. It's just all about the color. The color and the texture really, isn't it? You can probably hear me ripping that. It's some kind of real thin taffeta. Probably not. Probably everything I say taffeta and organdy and all that, but Really, everything these days is kind of polyester, unless you're into garment making, and then you get the real thing. But love these torn edges. There we go. Okay. Now, it's so light that when uh, you first tear it off, you probably think, well, that's useless. But um, once you layer it under there, it's gonna the color's gonna show up. So we'll just lift this pink back off, and I'll just lay down a little piece of pink, probably double layered right in the middle, and that'll give me the color dimension that I want. That's fine. And we'll just put this right back on here. And we're going to let these raggy edges stay where they're at for now because if we don't like them later, we can always snip them off. But it's hard to put them back on. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll cut this in two. And then that way I can place my rose clusters or the flower clusters on here right where I want them. You know there is a right and wrong side to this stuff and I always have to look hard. Okay that's great. Alright now don't forget we've got this all these little applique pieces we can use and even the straps that they put inside a dress to keep it on the hangers that's beautiful almost silky um, seam binding. So I thought well we can use that. So we've got this, and we won't need much of it because we're going to make um, a rose that will sit right on top of here. So what do we need all? We don't need too much. Now need is in the eye of the beholder. If you're a shabby chic lover, you'll want lots and lots of good stuff on yours. But um, I just want something that dangles. That's kind of, I like the loose look, and I have to practice at that because my artwork in every shape and form is not really loose enough to suit me. I have to learn that. So, if we kind of let this dangle off the edge right here. So now it's time to put this little fuzzy thing. I'm going to cut some of that off. It keeps catching on my thimble. By the way, this is my thimble on my finger. I make my own with a little piece of cardboard and a piece of strapping tape and I've done it for years and I love it much better than a thimble thimble. I never could manipulate anything with a real thimble. Now if you're a real hand quilter, you'll have to learn to do that, but I'm not. don't want to. I can do just enough of that to uh, satisfy what I need. 
So this cute little thing would look darling just dripping off at the edge here. So we're going to assume, let's make sure we got the right side. I don't think there's a right or a wrong to that. But let's assume that's where it's going to go. And perhaps we'll place our rows right in the middle here. So um, I'll just show you quick what I do with that. At this stage, what I want to do is just take some straight pins and hold this stuff in place. And because I do my hand stitching, um, I'm going to be twisting and turning and manipulating a lot. So I need a lot of pins. But if you just want to put it under the sewing machine and go around once or twice to capture everything, and make sure it's attached to that pellon, you could do that. But I like the hand stitching. I like the delicateness of it. And so for this purpose, that's what I'm doing. There are plenty of things I've made that I stitched on the sewing machine. But my whole idea here was to uh, do something while I was sitting on the couch. Even though my sewing machine is probably not more than five feet. Once you're propped up on the couch under a nice little warm blankie, you don't want to get up. So that's pretty nice that way. So what I did was I went ahead and, because this is to show you how I do it, I went ahead and um, threaded some needles. And I used a white heavy duty thread, hoping you could maybe see it just a little bit better. And I'll show you what I do. I'm just going to start in the back and come up. And the first thing I try to do is whatever is on the outside surface, I try to tack it in place first. Now we're just going to go in and out and in and out until we get these things basically secured to the foundation. I thought about doing this ahead of time and I thought, well, that's kind of cheating because not everybody is familiar with hand sewing and I don't know, maybe you'd like to see it. Maybe it's a waste of your time if you're a sewer. I'm checking to make sure I don't have any tangles um, and that the thread came all the way through. And I'm going to just come over here because I can see this netting is and look that caught in the needle so I'll put that back in place and then just in and out and in and out with tiny little stitches on the front now not large stitches on the front you'll see large ones in the back but not on the front we don't want that so where whenever you um, get caught see I got caught on a straight pin try not to take my straight pin out just going to untangle that and pull that taunt. And then once you go around this, just quick basting. Now when I'm holding this on my lap, I'm really quick. But I'm holding it at a distance from myself to have it under the camera lens. So that's a little bit time consuming. And you just want to, oh look, that's a cute little string of beads. We want to make sure that's on the outside. And we're going to stitch, stitch, stitch. And just go any direction you want. Grab whatever's the closest to you. And then what I do is turn it over on the back and make sure that I've pretty much covered everything. And if there's something that looks um, if there's a space that doesn't have enough stitching in it I kind of uh, just add a few more just to make sure now this is a little bit more con time consuming than what I usually do because I didn't have any appliques that I put on the previous roses that I made but stitching down an applique is a little bit different you want to make sure you get all the main parts of it secured So just in and out, in and out. And I was thinking when I threaded these needles, how many people even experience seamstresses, seamstresses that I've talked to um, don't know about um, a quilter's threading and a quilter's knot. So I'll talk to you about that. I, um, 
I, I learned it off of YouTube when I started wanting to know how to piece because piecing and quilting are two different things. I wanted to know how to piece uh, and applique. Um, I learned about these, the way to thread your needle. And boy, it was the best thing I ever learned. And I've been a sewer my entire life <laughs> and didn't know that. But there's just a little trick how you weave the thread into your needle to start with. And because I sew everything by hand with one strand of thread, you have that other strand here that's hanging off and if you're not careful it'll slip out of your needle so this little trick which I'll show you in a little bit it shows it keeps you from doing that basically it keeps that from happening and a quilter's knot a nice neat tiny little knot um, my mom taught me to roll it or dampen my finger and roll it around my finger and um, I, that's the way I put knots in my thread for years. Oh, I like this quilter's knot much better. It's nice and neat and tight, and you don't have a big clump of thread hanging on the back side of your project. Now, I feel like the applique is down good enough, so all I'm going to do is to just travel around this piece of collage snippets and just that'll catch everything and then I'm going to go around mostly the outside because when I put the rose right here in the middle that's going to catch that and if I have some loose pieces I love it because again it's loose it's natural looking it just looks like it was meant to be keeps its personality I'm fighting being too rigid because I was a garment sewer for years and then quilting and everything had to be precise and neat and that's not what I want for artwork so now here my second tail is in the fabric so I'm going to pull it out and then all I have to do with this special knot is tilt my needle sideways and then add or pull out the length And then just tiny little stitches and like I said go around the outside now if you love slow stitching and the look you get with um, embroidery thread where your tiny little stitches just in and out in and out when it shows on the front if you like that look and it suits your project you could do some of this um, what I call basting stitch you could do that with um, embroidery thread and a color but this is white white on white or basically it'll never show even though it's on light pink because you're just going to take teeny weeny little bites out of it and we're almost back around to the corner and then we'll have to lay this down and I'll show you how to start your rows so As you get this, um, your surface attached, just take your pins out. The more of them you get out of your way, the better. Now I'm just going to come right down through the middle here. And because that's a little loosey-goosey right there and it don't need to be bunched up. Loose is good, bunched up probably isn't. So, yeah, just going to end it off pretty quick you can see I had some little dangly things on that applique I just want to leave them loose just add to the design and the texture okay this is enough so I'm going to take my needle to the back and make a knot and a knot is just a little bite out of the fabric push your needle through catch the loop and pull it through and if you want to be really sure do it twice and try to do left over right and right over left that forms a square knot in there and leave plenty of tail on it you don't need to take it off real real close all right there's our foundation now <clears throat> let's look at one of our roses and let's say that we 
there's two kinds of roses that I made. Let me get another one so you can see the different styles. Okay, this is a totally twisted rose and rosebud. No loose petals on it. It's just a large loose rose. This one, when I made the bigger, bigger ones, I cut individual petals out of fabric. And so I thought maybe we would um, do that one single rose and we'll just do that much uh, today and I'll show you how to make the center and put the center in it. So what we want is petals. You can see this one here has just one single row of petal and this one here has almost a double row because I put an extra one in the middle and made sure I overlapped them. So very simple and th this is where my little stack of um, fabrics come in handy and you can see I've got quite an assortment I've got quite a few pinks I don't know that I have as light a pink as I wish I had but we're going to use whatever's in this basket that's the whole trick because if I was sitting on the couch I would make myself make it do so I've got a little stack of fabrics here some very colorful or really dense looking and others kind of and then I just kind of ask myself do I want to go dark center to light petals or light center to dark petals it doesn't matter it's whatever you want to do so uh, this would be a good place to show you how to start the rows the center let me get this needle put away what I did was I brought out a piece of paper um, to kind of show you how to make a ribbon rose because that's the basic concept that's used in the center of these roses. Now this piece of paper is one-sided and that's so that you can see how it's folded and how both sides of the fabric end up showing because even though you have the print of the fabric on one side there is color that shows through on the back side like look at this rose print and then you can see that on the back and that will be to your benefit to give you a lot of variation in that rose so we want to just take a piece of you can practice with ribbon that would probably be easier to practice with an old piece of fabric but if you don't know how to make a ribbon rose I'm sure that there's many tutorials out there on it but I'm going to show you on this piece of paper because it will be easier to see so um, let's pretend like this wavy edge is your torn edge of the fabric and because I want shaggy roses I'll tear my fabric and then if it's not shaggy enough I just scrape the edge of the fabric with my thumbnail and make it a little bit more raggy so here's the beginning you're going to fold this in probably like a triangle and this piece down here is going to be called your tail now on a piece of ribbon or a piece of fabric you would squeeze that together you can see how easy that would happen you just hold it and twist it and make a little tail because that's going to be what you use to start rolling it and you're going to roll this and then as you roll it this other piece you're going to fold it backwards roll it 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 fold it backwards and you can see that you begin to form a rosebud and that's just a piece of paper so it's very unforgiving but that gives you the basic idea so when I start rolling this fabric uh, you'll be able to see it come together much easier so we're just going to snip a little strip here I'm going to tear it and I know this is going to be the first center however long that piece of fabric is I use it I the shorter sometimes the better because that forces you to switch colors or add more colors and then it's just great you have quite the variation in that rose so I'm gonna fold my tail down and then I'm going to start rolling 
right along that edge. And you can see my tail sticking out here. So I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll. And then when I get right here, I'm going to start folding this piece of fabric backwards. And then I'm going to roll some more. Don't worry about those shaggy edges. They're going to end up giving lots of personality to your roses or your flowers or what else you're making. And so I just keep rolling it backwards and I get both variations of color from that piece of fabric, the front side and the back side. So there's my rosebud and to hold it just for now, I'm just going to put a, a straight pin straight through it. Now, what has happened is my tail has actually gotten longer and that's going to be good because you're going to use that to secure down that rosebud to the fabric. So let's see if I can get you just a little bit closer. Sorry, don't have that many settings on this. Now if you wanted to leave this as a rosebud, it's ready. It's ready to just, um, you'll take your needle and come in and out both sides of it. So let's just do that. I've got a couple needles threaded here and then I'm just going to uh, go back and forth and try to do it all the way around the base where the tail is and whoop sorry that one did not have a knot so let's get another one. Yes that one has a knot. Use whatever needles you like but I like milliner needles I like long skinny needles basically um, except if I'm appliqueing and then I use a little bit different needle. Now I'm just going back and forth long as you keep it down on the tail portion of it and then I want to make sure this last petal where I came around is secured so I'm just going to go straight through that to the other side. And then this is enough to hold this in place until I start putting it down on the surface. So, well, let's see. I'll go one more time. because, And then I'm going to knot it, but I'm not going to cut it off yet. Because we're going to switch colors. Okay, let's do a double knot just to make sure it doesn't loosen. And the, all of this is going to be hidden. It's not going to be seen. So there you have it. That's our little bud. And if I just wanted to make a whole cluster of rosebuds and put on that foundation, it would just be beautiful. I put a few soft leaves. Um, you can even use green netting or something like that just to give the illusion of leaves. And it just becomes so delicate. So my next shade I can choose. I think I'll use this one for my very next color. And it's got one torn edge already on it. So I'll just snip another strip. And I go usually three quarters or an inch wide. The bigger the rows, the wider the strip. But nothing's by any certain rule. And so now I just want to add on to that rosebud in a looser fashion than I was. I'm going to leave the thread attached and I'm going to pull it down here and wrap it around my tail just to keep it out of my way. So I'm just going to lay that rosebud right on there. And I might take this one backwards just a little bit. And then again, it's just the twist, roll around and roll the fabric backwards. And look at those different color variations that I'm going to get. Because the outside of the, or the inside and the outside of the rose is showing both. So I get all those different color tones. Now I'm leaving this very, very loose. I don't want it tight. I want it to, um, and it might not look quite right right there, but it will when I stitch it down to the fabric. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm, I've got my needle, the thread is still attached, and I'm just start going back and forth uh, and secure this 
last so-called petal going around. And again, don't worry how it looks under here. It is never going to show. Because I'm going to show you how to manipulate this rose and push it down onto the fabric and stitch it into place. And as you do that, you manipulate these petals to get them just exactly where you want them. So I'm turning this over so you can see. And we're just going to go through the important parts. And really, that's enough for right this right now at this stage. So I'm going to knot this off. And we're going to cut some petals. And now this piece of thread and this needle is still attached. So I'm going to lay it down. And then go back here. And we're going to decide um, about some petals. I'll show you how I cut my petals. You could cut yours several different ways. But what I'm going to do, I want my petals about an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter um, at the most. And I just take a strip of fabric. And to make it easy on yourself, uh, you can cut two or three at one time. So I'm dividing this piece of fabric up into thirds. Just fold it. You can see I've got one, two, three. And I want the raggy edge. So both sides are edgy or raggy, so it doesn't matter. But I'm just going to cut a rough uh, petal shape. And discard those tiny little pieces. And then take a look at them. And where they're cut, I'm going to drag my thumbnail along the edge and just tatter out some threads because I like that. Now I'm going to round these little corners off. It's just a little too sharp for me. And then I'll drag my fingernail over it again. There we go. OK. So we've got three petals. And this is going to be the top of your petal. And this is going to be the bottom. So all is well. Take that little corner off. I can tell my scissors aren't as sharp as they used to be for making the fabric push out. OK, so there you have it. So let me get a vision of how that might look. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. So those will work fine for the first row of petals going around. So typically, we're going to, um, I'm just going to lay these down overlap them and that would be my first row of petals. I'll lay that on there and look at it and see do I like it. I know I want to gather these petals a little bit and I think they're a little bit big. Uh, they're a little bit big this way. So I'm going to cut a little bit off. I'll just stack them up and do two at once. And there you have it. So when I put this down and gather them petals underneath, that's going to be just perfect. So I think I want one more color in there. And I want something, um, let's see, just. Let's use this old-fashioned looking print here. I just want to get two petals of this for the variation. So I'll just fold that over once. So I have two layers of fabric. And I will just cut my little petal. And I'll come back and scrape that edge with my nail. OK, so this is just going to give me a little variation. We'll pull those rags out, those threads. There we go. A 
Okay, so these bigger petals, these two will be my underneath. And I think I would like to have them sort of at the bottom of the rows. So they're going to be positioned on my base somewhere like this, perhaps. And then the others will go on top of it. And they'll all be gathered and stitched down. And then when you can see when you pull the threads, there it's going to get a lot of dimension there. So let's take these off and let's get the first things first. We want to attach these two petals. Now it doesn't have to be a lot of attaching because when you see how we put the rose uh, bud down on top of it, that's going to take care of a lot of it. But we just want to... Oh, let me, I'm tying a knot and I should show you how to do that quilter's knot. So here's how it goes. You're, you're already threaded. You have a tail halfway down and you want to grab the thread between your finger and uh, the needle. And then you're just going to wrap your thread about three or four times. I, it depends for me how many times I wrap how thick the thread is. And you're going to grab that. You're going to pinch that between your two fingers. And you just simply push that needle up, hold on to that thread that's in between your two fingers, and pull it through, and you end up with the most beautiful little knot. Look at that. Okay, so that's how that goes. So I'm going to hold this up in the air to stitch these so you can really see how they go. And... Nothing is precise. It's however you want it to be. So I'm going to start over here because I know I want this to appear like the bottom of my rows. So I'm just going to put a small gather there and come up through there and back and then come up through here. And you always have the, the catching thread. And then there's my first rose petal attached to the fabric. So I can lay my next rose petal right on it, put my little fold in it. Let's see, make sure we get what appears to be the center of the rose. And because I'm underneath that one petal, you're never going to see me loop back down through that fabric. I'll pull that. And then I'll catch right here. And then catch that again, just make sure it's secure. And that's good enough because it's going to get a lot more tacking down as soon as I put the next petals in the, in the rosebud on it. So let's come back up to the front. Doesn't matter where you come up, somewhere in the petals. And then we're going to lay the next petals on there. So we have these three, and I envision them something like this. And then we'll put the gathers in them, and then I'll show you how to embed that rosebud right on top of that. So same method, lay them down. Keep your center kind of tight, because this rose is plenty big. You don't have to spread it out. You actually want them to overlap each other under here, um, what's going to be under the rose bud. And in and out and in and out. So let's lay our next rose bud in place and then we'll come up right under it. We can even gather this one twice if we want to, but let's put the first little pleat in it. Whoops, caught on my scissors. That is dangerous because that can cut your thread. And then you'd have to start all over. So this one can have an extra little gather in it, and that helps bring it around the, around the curve, so to speak. I was going to say around the corner, but move them scissors and then right back down catching that pleat in place and then our last little pink rosebud or petal right here and I'll 
just come up. I'll go in and come up right in the pleat of that petal. Catch that. And then use my needle to scooch it over. And that pleat goes backward, which is fine, great, wonderful. All the variation you can get in it, the prettier it'll look when you're all done. So I'm just going to go in and out a couple times just to make sure my thread doesn't loosen. That's all that's for. As a matter of fact, I can even put a tiny little knot right here just to make sure that that doesn't loosen itself while I'm manipulating the rosebud. So again, we've got the two petals down here, the bigger ones, three pink petals gathered up there, and we have our little rosebud we made. So we're going to embed that rosebud right on top of those petals, and you can begin to see how it'll look. Very nice. So the first thing I do is lay it down, twist it, decide which is the bottom is, so to speak, and which is, and then start pressing and manipulating these petals to fold backwards or open up or pull the, um, the rose center towards you or whatever you want it to do. Uh, sometimes I take my needle and pull that out and make sure I like to see this, that tight center of the rose. So that looks pretty good to me. You can see that. And then now my thread is on top of my base. So I can tip it sideways and go under here and just catch some of that rose bud that we made. So I can pull my thread through without catching all kinds of stuff in it. And now remember, we've got another needle here that was still attached to the rosebud. And that's going to come in handy. But with this one, since I already had it in the foundation, I'm just going to use it to go along. And what I'm going to do is pull these petals down and just stitch into those petals, deep into those petals. And see what I'm doing here? Just flip it open until you can see where you're at and come up and catch some of that fabric. Anything that you can catch is going to keep it in place. And then I'll push the next row of petals down and come up inside it and back down. And then here, we're over here, push this down, come up near the base, and just take a stitch. That is going to keep those rows of fabric where you went around and round and round, keep them in place. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this one needle. So I'm going to turn this over and just tie it off. And I definitely want to double knot that. Left over right, right over left. You'll get the hang of that. Sometimes I can't always tell which is left, which is right. So then I do three of them. Leave a tail. Don't cut yourself too short there. All right, so we're back to that first needle. And now that needle is already attached to the rosebud that we made. So we're just going to use this thread from now on to finish securing this thing in place. So the first thing I want to do is get underneath here and there's my thread coming out and it's attached to the old tail that I made. And I'm going to make sure that I go through that tail and then come up in between some of these petals. And that's where a long needle comes in handy because a short needle, you'd have to go down, go through the back, go to the back, come back up the front. But when I have a long, strong needle like this, I can go in and out in one motion. And our rose is looking pretty darn good. 
So what I want to do is just look at it, feel it, move it around, and decide what needs secured. So I want to come up between these two petals right here. So I'm going to spread them apart. And since my thread is in the back, I'm going to come right up. There it is, right there in that little spot. And you're just going to continue to tack it down like that until you get, get it secured and get the petals to look like you want them to look. So a fabric flower and easy to do using all your scraps. And then what you would do is add any more embellishments such as glass beads, little pearls, a uh, snippet full more of lace, or perhaps, um, oh, I'll tell you what I like, enjoyed doing was um, I had some of this fluffy eyelash yarn. I just take a short snippet of it, I'll show you, and tuck it under, and it just adds some texture and greenery. So I would just take a little piece like that and lift up one of the petals and hide it under there, and uh, just let the ends of it show. Tack it, of course, with your thread. And a few little leaves, glass beads, and anything else that you might want to put on that little cluster. You can continue and continue. There's no end to what you could do to it. Now, if you were doing a farm style rose, such as on a, a rose on a maybe a burlap background or something like that, and you want to have a country uh, farmhouse feel, you could start adding rick rack buttons, anything like that that you want. But there's my simple take on the fabric roses. And if it helped you at all, give me a like and a thumbs up. And if you want to see more about how to put the leaves on or anything like that, uh, just let me know in the comments and we'll do another video. But there you have fabric roses for the hand stitching lover. And I appreciate you watching and thanks very much. Bye-bye.